Hey guys, I'm going to do a video on adding a tachometer with a hour, total hour meter, and a service reminder countdown. And the service reminder and the total hour meter are both resettable. I'm going to add it to the mini excavator here. But uh, I bought this off of Amazon and it only comes with, uh, you know, almost enough wire to do what I need to do. Because I want to mount it right here on the uh, front panel and then run it down behind underneath and then into the engine compartment to the, to the spark plug cable. But I'm going to have to add some wire to it to do it. So let's do that real quick before we mount this and run it. All right, so to add some wire link to this uh, little tachometer hour meter, I'm going to use these solder seal connectors. These are pretty cool. I'll put a link in the, the description down below for them on Amazon. It has uh, solder in it and it has two chunks of uh, sealant that will melt and seal around the wires to make it weatherproof and then this clear tube here is a heat shrink tube that closes around the connection so let's go ahead and take a look at these All right, I got some wire from the junk drawer this is some approximately 18 gauge wire really doesn't matter as long as it's stranded wire it gives you more flexibility and then the wire on the sensor itself is probably 22 gauge. So I might strip about maybe a third of an inch off of each end, one off the sensor and one off of the wire from the junk drawer. We're just going to add a couple feet to this and cut it off as needed. So then uh, you take one of the wires and push it all the way through the solder seal connector. And then you take both wires kind of put them together in the middle and twist them around and around so that you get a nice little whoop, nice little connection between them kind of wrap them around like so so they're now kind of twisted around each other and then you push the solder cell connector so that is right over the solder is right over the connection and then you take a lighter and you start heating it up kind of slowly and evenly you don't want to heat one spot by itself you just keep going back and forth until the solder melts and you'll see the solder kind of flow and there it goes it's flowing but I'm gonna try and heat both ends of this so that the sills seal up there and you can see the solder flowed real nicely. Now you just gotta hold it very carefully and not move it while it cools down. This is where you can make these solder connections really bad is if you move it while it's cooling. You need to just let it sit there for like maybe 30, 40 seconds without moving it. Otherwise you end up with a cold solder joint and then the wires come apart. So I'm just gonna let that kind of just cool down on its own. Give it a few seconds, and I can check it with my finger to see if it's connected. And I think it's sealed. It's pretty, pretty solid now. So, if you want to check the connection, you pull both ends with a pretty good amount of force. And as long as it doesn't pull apart, you have a pretty good connection here. It's sealed from the weather. Anyways, I'm going to go up to the tractor now. I mean, the excavator, and work on that putting this guy in. All right, so I'm gonna mount this little meter right to the center here. So what I'm gonna have to do is run the wire across this way and then down this side, because that's the only spot I see an opening. So run it down and then down into this opening here where we can run it back to the engine compartment. Uh, I removed this floor panel. There was three 12 millimeter bolts holding it on. Pretty easy to come off. So let's go ahead and run this wire and see if we can fish it through. So I'm gonna just pass the end in here. And then we'll start feeding it down through that opening over here next to the hydraulic control pack. 
and hopefully we can reach it in the bottom down here. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Come on. Got it. All right. So now we can just pull it through this compartment. Got a little knot in here. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Fixed. And we'll leave an extra bit of wire up here and we'll zip tie it for now right to one of these control panel control sticks. So let's do that. Just to keep some service loop here. And then we'll feed it back into the engine compartment and find a nice path for it to keep it out of the way of everything that's hot and vibrating. And then we'll zip tie it in. So, we'll get to that next. Alright, so this is my reasoning on the routing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to run it down through the right hand side of the vehicle because it looks like there's a nice path I can zip tie it to this hydraulic uh, return line from the filter and then bring it up around this way and wrap it around the spark plug cable here. Uh, the other side of the vehicle we have the hydraulic pump. I mean we could come this way but I think it's better to go the other way. So let me go ahead and route that and zip tie it in and then we'll wrap it around this little spark plug cable next. Okay, so I got the wire zip tied in, routed where I want it. Um, I brought it up on the throttle control table, zipped it up to this last part here. Now you have to wrap it around the spark plug uh, wire about five times. So we'll do that real quick. All their little diagrams, they show this all crunched together real nicely, like so. So, let's do that. And it says five to ten times on the wire. So, let's just zip tie it here. Just to hold it temporarily. Mm. Mm. Nice little coil there. I'll cut this off if after we test it that it seems to be good. So we're expecting 1200 RPM at idle and about 3600 at maximum RPM. Um, let me show you the routing. I'll go through and clean these up and cut the ends off um, after we're done. But I basically zip tied it so it's not anywhere in the, in the way. And then I also added some zip ties to like the hydraulic lines to keep them together and the electrical wires to keep them together. I'll go through and clean that up. But let's see. We have the display. Let's go ahead and start it at idle. So that's at idle. And then we'll ramp it up. seems to work pretty good. We'll go through and clean everything up and then we'll use the Velcro sticky tape and stick this right here. It has a little uh, battery that goes in the back of it. Um, it says it should last about six years. But we'll find out. Um, let me show you what the meter has on it. So that's the total hour count um, and that's how many hours or till I expect the next maintenance but I can set that up and rechange it 
and then reset it also. Same with the total hour meter. But anyways, uh, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I have more videos coming, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.